Hi everyone, I'm Zeke. This is Odd Job Fix. Today working with this little Scottish Pine console table, we're going to be dealing with a break. Uh, previous repairs, which are always more difficult. There's PVA glue present, which is much more difficult to break the joint, so I'll go through the procedures with that. Uh, there's wood worm damage, and we're going to be using some shellac fill sticks. So let's get started with that. One of the first things I want to do is figure out where these legs belong. So I've used these these little dots and some squares to try and lay this out. Now it might be hard to see some minor damage right in here, but that's slightly open. So that has a lot to do with dots one, two, and three. So let me put a clamp on that and see if I can get the three uh, in a right angle. Okay, we're pretty close. I've got just a little bit of movement back and forth there. This needs to come in just a little and it doesn't want to move so I probably have to break apart that joint. This one here is definitely loose so it's pretty squared up right now. So I'm going to count on it. But now down to where the real damage is. There's some woodworm damage here which obviously weakened the wood. I don't know how close I can get to that. I think you can see all the damage that the worms did. And so when this leg was kicked out, it just snapped the wood from the mortise and tenon over here to this uh, cutout for the drawer. In addition to that, this joint is completely pulled out. So that dot represents where that leg should actually be when this thing is uh, fully reassembled. First thing I'm going to do is flip it upside down and take the top off and uh, then start uh, taking the, uh, the rails and mortise and tenons apart. Well, now that I've got it flipped over I want to know which of these are loose and I'm not getting any movement back and forth this way. I'm not getting any movement here nor here. I may be getting a little movement right there. But I don't think it's the joint. However, this is the one that was open. So I think it needs to be taken apart and re-glued. There's no question about this. And now that it's upside down, this was the leg that was completely blown out of shape. So, off with the top. These screws seem to have an un uncommonly thin slot for the size of the head. Today I'm working inside of my office and uh, playroom I guess you might say because uh, the shop's too cold and I'm afraid uh, uh, this piece won't acclimate well if it's subject to that kind of cold and you can see that as after I remove the uh, the front rail there from the tenons 
that the wormwood damage is completely separated and dropped out. And that's all the dust left behind by the damage from the wormwood. Um, I didn't see anything wiggling, so but that's what it looks like. So I'm going to clamp this up, try and make sure that it's, it's fairly straight with the rest of the face. And um, and put some uh, hide glue in there. Okay, well, get this unclamped and see how it looks. I'm going to take a little CA glue now and just uh, consolidate some of the wood where the damage was done there. Later, I filled some epoxy in there, too. So here we're melting some shellac fill because um, the top edge was just completely missing. So I made a dam there out of a, uh, a shingle and some uh, packing tape on the backside so it wouldn't stick. So after... Um, this fill stick instantly uh, dries. I'm uh, dragging it off and then sanding it. And I'll probably have to go over that again in order to get that corner right. So here's one of the example of the open joint that uh, was causing problems. And this is uh, part of the process of getting that opened up. It's carpenter's glue, it's not the old wood glue, so it's very difficult. Um, I moistened it with a little steam. That didn't seem to be too effective. I'm getting a lot of heat in there right now. And that putty knife is stiff and it's pretty darn hot. Uh, it's, it's melting the glue, but it's still not doing what uh, I needed to do. So we're gonna have to turn to a couple of other tricks here. one of those will be the use of acetone. So I'm going to fill a syringe full of acetone and insert it into where the putty knife was and try to get it down deep inside that mortise and see if I can free up that tenon. Now this is the wormwood side that was damaged and I wanted to repair that before I attempted to take the leg off because otherwise I don't know what I would have been working with. Here I'm using a spreading clamp and uh, putting some pressure on it and giving it some more taps. Just trying to go gently as you go because um, that's not very strong. Uh, it's been repaired before, as I've said, and uh, it doesn't want to give up easily, but uh, too much and uh, I'm gonna do some real damage, so. Now I flipped it over. I'm going to try to see if I can put that uh, spreader clamp on in a different way. And I'm going to use even another uh, trick here, which uh, ultimately got the job done. A little more pressure. Now we've got the syringe. Get some acetone down in there. And then here's the last process. Get that vinegar in there too. So acetone, steam, heat, vinegar, it took all of that in order to get this thing to free up. And it finally just moved right there. So. Now I'm able to uh, get a pry bar in there and gently work that out. And I'll go about cleaning up all that old PVA glue with the scraper, chisel, etc. You can see inside here, it's just well, it's handmade. It's actually sort of a cottage made thing. And you're going to see evidence of that later in the video. But uh, on this particular mortise, uh, some of the wormwood tenon was left behind. Now, what I've done here is I've used some nails to locate the uh, 
frame back on the top where it was originally uh, fastened. Well, after a dry fit up, I was getting ready to glue this up and I noticed something kind of interesting. I'm going to sort of dwell here and see if you can see what it is. If I go over here, I think I I think you can see what it is for sure, but maybe the camera perspective isn't isn't just right. So, let me do a little bit better job. So we're looking at uh, one and three eighths from the edge there, and this one's one and seven eighths. I'm gonna come over here. We're still pretty close to one and seven eighths, but two and a quarter. So you remember that I use these long 20 penny nails in order to locate the original screw holes. So that's where it was put together. With the whole back end there sort of uh, skewed that direction. So what would you do under the circumstances? I'm going to go ahead and glue it up and I'll show you what I did at the end of the video. Oh, and one more thing while we're talking about this. In the beginning, you remember that I had the table sitting upright and it was sitting on the green dots which sort of located uh, where the legs should sit in reference to the tabletop. Uh, against the wall and whatever. And why this is important is if this table is placed in a room that is parallel to hardwood floors, say, and the the leg one of the leg sticks out past the other, they're not going to sit on the same board. It's going to look ridiculous. So um, I I have to be aware of not only how the uh, rails are attached to the top, but I the one of the most important things is uh, where the legs fall or land on the floor, and they need to be equidistant and in more or less a perfect rectangle. So, uh, a lot to think about. Well, the next moment or so, you're just going to see a uh, speeded up version of a glue up, uh, something that uh, most of you have seen hundreds of times on various YouTube channels. It's nothing special here. But uh, rather than using a hide glue, uh, I am going back with some more PVA or carpenter's glue uh, for, the, for the strength. Um, it, just, um, it just didn't occur to me that, that hide glue was necessary on this particular piece. I could have gone either way, but um, um, I hope this doesn't ever have to come apart again. Uh, it would be rather traumatic if it did. So a lot of checking here with the square. And now I need to line up the legs. Oh, I'm doing that just using a cross brace and um, measuring and seeing that the uh, holes drilled into the center of the legs are are all the same dimension on a crisscross and also from front to back. And it looks pretty good. Well, it's time to put those uh, screws back in and um, that's pretty much a wrap on this job. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the notification, and most of all, if you have any comments, please list them below. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, my internet friend, Tom Johnson of Thomas Johnson Antique Furnishing Repair in Gorham, Maine. Uh, he's my YouTube mentor, although he may not know it. So thanks again, Tom, for uh, all of your inspiration. And I'll see you guys next time on Odd Job Fix. Thanks.